What is this Aga pattern? How is it related to microservices or domain-driven design? Is orchestration better than choreography? Let's discover it in the next few minutes. In traditional monolithic applications, transactions are managed by a single database, ensuring the asset properties. An example of a transaction is the transfer of money between a checking or current account to a savings account. In its most simplified form, we need to perform two operations. Deduct the amount from the checking account. Credit the amount to the savings account. Atomicity ensures that a transaction is treated as a single unit of work, either fully completed or not at all. If any part of the transaction fails, the entire transaction is rolled back to its previous state. Consistency ensures that the database remains in a valid state after a transaction, meaning that any constraints or rules defined for the database are not violated. Isolation ensures that concurrent transactions do not interfere with each other, and that each transaction sees the database as if it were the only one accessing it. Durability ensures that once a transaction is committed, its changes are permanent and will survive any subsequent failures, such as power outages or system crashes. Unfortunately, things are more complicated in a microservices architecture. Let's imagine a scenario where we have one microservice responsible for the checking accounts and another responsible for the savings accounts. Since each microservice manages its own bounded context in a separate database, we cannot leverage a single database transaction. This is where the Saga pattern comes in. The Saga is a design pattern that decomposes a long-lived transaction into a series of smaller transactions distributed across multiple processes. It also guarantees that either all transactions in a Saga are successfully completed, or compensating transactions are run to amend a partial execution. In its happy path, the transaction proceeds from one step to the next until completion. In the case of a step failure, the Saga performs compensating actions in order to take the system back to its original state. For instance, should we fail to credit the target account, we will perform a credit of the source account to compensate the initial debit operation. In the original paper by Hector Garcia Molina, published in 1997, the concept of long-lived transaction is tied to time. Today, we can break away from that concept and we can consider a long-lived transaction any transaction that has more than one operation. Another thing I want to highlight is that sagas are not specific to microservices. You can also use them in a monolith. Sagas are applicable anytime we cannot create a single database transaction. For instance, our workflow might interleave database operations with invocations of other services. That's a perfect fit for a saga as well. In terms of domain-driven design, a saga is a perfect pattern whenever you have a business operation that spans multiple bounded contexts. There are two ways to implement sagas. We can use choreography or orchestration. In the choreographed approach, the execution flow control is distributed among services. Each service is responsible to trigger either a continuation step or a compensation step. This is usually done with events to maximize the decoupling between services. Our simple money transfer scenario would be a perfect candidate for this approach. However, more complex sagas with many participating services are difficult to manage with choreography. The scope of the entire saga is not immediately evident, but requires hopping from one microservices codebase to the next. There is a risk of cyclic dependency between services. Finally, integration testing is difficult because we need all services in place to simulate a transaction. In these scenarios, we can implement orchestration where the execution flow control is centralized. A service is responsible for the invocation of all continuation or compensation steps. In this approach, the orchestrator is unilaterally dependent on the Saga participants, while the participants are fully decoupled between themselves. 
The workflow is more readable and predictable, since it's defined entirely in the orchestrator's code base. The only drawback of this approach is that it introduces a new service which needs to be designed and implemented, while creating an additional point of failure. As you can imagine, there are already several solutions in the market you can leverage to implement Sagas. I've been working with Temporal for the last few months and I find it perfect to implement orchestration. It lets the developer focus on defining the workflow code in its preferred language, while leaving the durability and resiliency concern to the platform. Let me know if you want me to dig deeper into this topic. There are also other alternatives like AWS Step Functions, Azure Logic Apps and many more. The saga is obviously not bulletproof. We have no guarantee that the compensation steps will succeed, so we can still have the system left in an inconsistent state. An alternative is to use two-phase or three-phase commits or some transaction engine like Atomicos or Bitronics. However, these alternatives can increase complexity and reduce performance because of their need to communicate synchronously during the transaction. For this reason, sagas are usually preferred in a microservices architecture because they allow us to operate our services independently and asynchronously. Let me know if you want to know more about this topic. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe and share. Thank you very much and now time to learn something new.